Hello and welcome to another section of this complete Angular course. As you already know that Angular has introduced a new feature in Angular version 16 called as signals. So in this section, we will try to understand what is a signal, what is its use and why you might consider using signals in your Angular application. We will also learn how to create and use a signal in an Angular application. And we will also learn about some important APIs which signals provide. Now, in this lecture, let's try to understand what is a signal and what is the reason Angular has introduced signals. So at the moment, by the time I'm recording this video, signals have been introduced only as a developer preview. This feature is likely to be stable once Angular version 17 is released, but at the moment, it's just a developer preview. And that simply means that both the syntax and the feature set around signals is likely to change. And it is also already clear that most signal related features will be added in the future versions of Angular. And also patterns and best practices around signals are still to evolve. So in this section of this complete Angular course, I will help you get started with signals and cover some of the basic concepts around signals, which is already available in Angular version 16. And in this lecture, let's learn what signals are and why do we might want to use them. And from the next lecture, we will start creating and using signals in our Angular application. So by definition, a signal is a wrapper around a value that can notify interested consumers when the value changes. And signal can contain any value. It can contain simple primitive values, or it can also contain complex data structures like arrays or objects. Now, don't worry if this definition does not make any sense right now. You will understand this when we'll start creating and using signals in our Angular application. But before that, let's try to understand why Angular introduced this signal feature. Without signals, Angular application relies on change detection cycle to find out if some data has changed and then it updates the UI based on that change. Let's try to understand this with an example. So here I have created a brand new Angular project called Angular Signals. In this project, if I expand this source folder and if I expand this app folder, there we have this app component. If I go to the HTML file of this app component, here we have a very simple HTML. And in here, we are using another component called signals. And I have created this component here. And if I expand this signals component, and if you go to the HTML file of this signals component, there also we have a very simple HTML. Basically, we have two buttons, this minus button and this plus button. And in between, we are displaying the value of a counter property. So if I go to signal component.ts file, there in this file, we have two properties. We have this counter property and we have this message property. So in the view here, we are displaying the value of the counter property. Then we are also binding this click event on this minus button and on this plus button. So when this minus button is clicked, we are calling this decrement function. If I go back again, here you will notice we have this decrement function. And in this function, all we are doing is we are decrementing the counter value by one. In the same way, we are also binding this click event on this plus button. And there, when the click event happens, we are calling this increment function. And in the increment function, again, we are simply incrementing the value of counter by one. Then we also have another div. And inside this div, what we are doing is we are using this ng for directive to loop over this message array. So in the component class, we have this message property, which is storing an array. Currently, this array is empty. And in this component class, we are not doing anything with this message array. But basically, in the view template, what we are trying to do is we are trying to loop over the elements of message array and we are displaying its value. Currently, it is not going to display anything in the view because this message array is empty. So if I go to the web page, here you will notice that we have a very simple Angular application where we have two buttons, minus and plus. And when I click on this plus button, it is going to increment the value of counter property. And when I click on this minus button, it is going to decrement the value of counter property. Now the question here is how Angular is updating this value when we are clicking on this plus button or this minus button. The answer is it uses change detection cycle. So what happens is whenever the value of a property in the Angular application changes, Angular runs a change detection cycle. And using change detection cycle, it identifies if a data has changed or not. 
if the data has changed it will update the ui with the updated value now when angular will run this change detection cycle well on this minus button and on this plus button we have binded click event so whenever one of these buttons will be clicked angular will run a change detection cycle to check if the value of a property has changed or not in this case it will run the change detection cycle to check if the value of this counter property has changed or not if the value has changed it will update this counter value and it will also render the updated value in the ui and to show you that angular is running a change detection cycle whenever these buttons are clicked what i will do is in the component class i am going to add ng do check lifecycle hook now we know that this ng do check lifecycle hook gets called whenever a change detection cycle runs and in order to use this ng do check lifecycle hook i am also going to implement do check interface for this component class and to use this do check interface we also need to import it from angular slash go and inside this i am simply going to write a console.log statement and in that console.log statement i'll simply say angular change detection called okay let me save the changes here and let's go back to the web page let's open developer console here let me clear everything and now just notice what happens when i click on this plus button you will notice that that message angular change detection cycle called that has been logged here if i click on this minus button again that message has been logged here again if i click on this minus button again that message has been logged here so every time we click on one of these two buttons it is going to call the change detection cycle in order to check if something has changed in the angular application or not and if something has changed angular will update the ui with that change and this is the behavior we want for our angular application right we want angular to update the ui whenever some data changes in the angular application so this is the expected behavior but the problem here is that if this button is clicked but if it does not change the value if it does not change any data then also the change detection cycle will run because in that case since an event has happened and we are binding that event in the html file here so here we are binding this click event on these two buttons so whenever these two buttons will be clicked angular has to check for that click event if something has changed in the angular app if some property or some data has changed or not so even though if no property or no data is changing angular will run the change detection cycle so if i go back to vs code and let's say when this minus button is clicked instead of calling this decrement method i will simply pass zero here that means when this click event will happen we are not doing anything we are not decrementing the value of counter property but still if i go back to the web page let me clear the console again and when i click on this minus button you will notice that the counter value has not changed but still the change detection cycle has run if i click on it again again the change detection cycle has run even though no data has changed in the angular application and this is a disadvantage so when we rely on change detection cycle to update the ui whenever the data changes it works as expected but the problem is change detection cycle also gets called when no data has changed so this change detection cycle gets called very frequently and this can impact the performance of our angular application another thing which you need to remember is that behind the scenes the change detection cycle algorithm uses a library called as zone.js and since we need this zone.js file for running change detection cycle when we run our angular application and when the bundles are downloaded those bundles also contains the zone js code for example here if i go to network tab let me move this console window a little bit up let me clear everything and let me reload this page so when we run an angular application for the first time it download all the bundles and files which is required for that angular application so you can see it has downloaded the runtime.js polyfills.js vendor.js main.js and style.js so these bundles contains our css styles 
the JavaScript code which we write for our Angular application. It contains the HTML markups and it also contains the JavaScript code of the other Angular modules which we are using in our Angular application. And these bundles also contains the JavaScript code of third party libraries which we are using in the Angular application. And JS is one such external library which we use in our Angular application because Angular depends on JS library in order to run change detection cycles. Now, the disadvantage here is that since our Angular application depends on JS library, it increases the bundle size of our Angular application. So this is another disadvantage when we rely on change detection cycle for updating the UI whenever something changes in the Angular application. And finally, JS library also does not tell Angular which component has changed and which part of that component has changed. So let's say in our Angular application, we have 15 components. And out of those 15 components, in one of the component, a property of that component has changed. But JS library cannot tell Angular in which component and which property has changed. So what basically happens is whenever something changes in our Angular application, even though that change has happened only in one component, Angular will have to re-render all the components in the component tree because Angular does not know where the change has happened. And that's because JS does not tell Angular in which component or in which part of the Angular application the change has happened. So this is another disadvantage. And all these disadvantages which comes with change detection mechanism, it can affect the performance of our Angular application. And to overcome all these problems, Angular has introduced signals in Angular version 16. Signals gives us an alternate way of managing and detecting changes in the data and update the UI. In this way, it allows Angular to get rid of that extra JS library. That's because with signals, we do not have to rely on change detection cycle to detect the changes and update the UI. And since we do not have to rely on change detection, we don't need that library at all. Also, with signals, we do not have automatic change detection. Instead, we as a developer tell Angular when the data changes. And we as a developer tell Angular where the data is used. And therefore, Angular knows which part of the UI needs to be updated with what data. And only those parts of the UI gets updated. So unlike with change detection cycle, where a single change leads to complete re-render of the component tree, using signals, we can tell Angular in which component the change has happened and which part of the UI needs to be updated. So when working with signal, we as a developer will have to do slightly more work, but as an upside, we will have full control and we can very likely achieve a better performance for our Angular application. And in this way, signals leads to a better performance and a smaller bundle. And that's why signals are added in Angular and why we should consider using them. So I hope now you have got a better idea of what we are going to use signals for and why it has been introduced. In a very simple words, we can say that signals will allow us to improve the performance of our Angular application significantly. Now keep in mind that signals are still in developer preview. It is not completely stable yet. So these advantages, which we have talked about signals, it will only really be available once signals are stable and only after you fully switch to signals in your Angular application. As long as you have one component which relies on change detection approach, you will not get too much benefits from signal. And at the moment with Angular 16, you can't fully switch to signals yet. But in the future, once the signals are stable and can be fully utilized in Angular application, you will get those benefits.